So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and most warmly welcome to this press conference of Finnish and Swedish Prime Ministers. And we start with short statements, and then we have some time for the questions. So Prime Minister, please. Thank you so much. I'm very happy to welcome my new colleague, Ulf Kristersson, to Finland to help. Thank you today for your work visit. So very much welcome here. Of course, we discussed today our bilateral relations that are excellent and will continue, so I'm sure. And then we discussed about Ukraine, the situation in Ukraine, Russia, of course, our uh, NATO applications, also energy uh, and also technology that we share uh, together. And then we discussed about the upcoming EU presidency of, of Sweden. If I will start uh, by the energy situation, it worries, of course, Finland and Sweden very well, as all the countries in European Union. We last week had the European Council that focuses on energy and especially the high prices that our citizens are now facing. We must make sure that we will invest in renewables uh, together as EU countries, and also we need mechanism to lower down the prices of energy that will also uh, make sure that the inflation wouldn't raise any more. Then we discussed about Ukraine. We, have, we must make sure that Ukraine will win the war. We will continue our support for Ukraine, the military, uh, the equipment support, also financial support, also humanitarian support, and making sure that if people are fleeing Ukraine, that we will welcome them and making sure that they will cope in the very difficult situation. Our NATO applications uh, are now ratified all across NATO member states. There are still few countries that haven't ratified uh, Hungary and, and then Turkey. And it's very important for us, of course, that Finland and Sweden would join NATO hand in hand as we made the process so far. The NATO membership of Finland and Sweden would strengthen the security of our countries as well as the security of whole Northern Europe. We must state this clearly. Our membership will make the whole alliance stronger in all fronts. And we are working very closely together as we have been working so far on the issue. We also discussed technology. And I think we have such many things in common when it comes to new technology, especially because our board countries has champions, Nokia and Ericsson, that are also uh, working together. And we must make sure that Europe will have all the capabilities when it comes to digitalization, when it comes to new technologies. And we have to make sure that we are not dependent on authoritarian countries when it comes to new technologies. And I think Finland and Sweden could be real champions in this front. And this was something that we discussed also, how we could better cooperate, work together when it comes to new technologies and be champions of the whole Europe. And then, finally, we are very happy that Sweden will take the EU presidency next spring, uh, and we are counting on your uh, work uh, on this. We have so many very hard discussions ahead of us, but I'm sure that the EU presidency that you will help make will make uh, a, a very big leaps forward when it comes to many difficult issues. So please, you're very welcome, and the floor is now yours, Ulf. Thank you so much, Prime Minister. Thank you so much. One of the big privileges of becoming a new Swedish Prime Minister is actually going to Helsinki. That was what, and, and today was the occasion. I really uh, appreciate it, really, truly. And uh, I could make this press conference extremely brief through simply saying I agree with everything he said. It was an excellent uh, summarization of what we have been talking about, and I really underline the, the fact that we have so many things in common. If I nevertheless should say a few words about this, um, I think that the fact that we are in such an extremely challenging geopolitical situation right now, that is kind of the, it's so fundamental for all our discussions in terms of energy, in terms of, of defense policies, in terms of the NATO application, in terms of our our support for Ukraine. So that is actually, a, that, that affects all our discussions. Uh, the NATO application is, is of obvious interest. Um, we are already now cooperating very, very uh, 
closely and obviously that would affect a whole part of the region if we could cooperate as NATO allies as well. I think we both realize that we are security providers uh, in, in NATO. We, we, uh, we want to be, have the, uh, to be uh, protected collectively, but we also want to help collectively. Um, I stress the fact that there is a very, very firm and broad uh, unity in Sweden for this NATO application. Um, I also stress that I cooperate very, very well with, with my predecessor and with your previous colleague, Magdalena Andersson, and the Social Democrats in Sweden in, in this very uh, common effort to, as soon as possible, become members of, of, of NATO. Um, of course, we discussed how we best support Ukraine. We, even though this is on the first real trip, we both made a trip to, to Brussels last week and we met, met for the first time for the European Council meeting. And obviously, uh, Ukraine was the top of our agenda. We have President Zelensky on, on screen. Um, and as always, we ask for more, uh, more support. Uh, in my um, government statement, uh, Two weeks ago, uh, I stressed that Sweden is very committed to, to, to continue with political, military, humanitarian, economic support for, for Ukraine. And we are right now uh, assessing how Sweden best can increase our military support uh, for Ukraine without risking, of course, domestic needs in, in the buildup of, of the Swedish armed forces. Uh, and finally, um, Ukraine will obviously also be a, a central part for the Swedish presidency. Beside all the other things, we actually discussed in Brussels two weeks, uh, a few days ago, that we are very good in crisis management nowadays in Brussels, the pandemic, the, the war, and we are doing what we need to do. But we also need to do long-term things beside, and, and that goes further, uh, crisis management is competitiveness. We talked about tech companies. Uh, Sweden and, and Finland, we, we share uh, not only knowledges, but we also share ability in terms of technology that is crucial to the, to the free world. And uh, we think that uh, for Europe to be more, more of a champion, uh, the tech companies of Finland and Sweden should be, be of even bigger importance. Uh, finally, uh, climate policy uh, to uh, phase out fossil fuels, uh, energy policies. Uh, we briefly discussed the, the possibilities of, of, of more nuclear energy. Uh, both Sweden and Finland are, are, are countries that are, has a, have a possibility to, to become uh, more or less few, uh, fossil free uh, um, and build up uh, independence uh, from others in terms of, of energy um, in, in energy. So uh, that was a few other things that we discussed. I think finally that we have to face uh, a situation where uh, the outside world gives enormous challenges to our two countries. But we also have to do things that are in the long term gives, uh, gives Finland and Sweden even better possibilities to, to cooperate within the European Union, to cooperate within NATO, uh, to s stick to our cooperation, but do it even uh, with bigger uh, impact within other international organizations. And I see a very good future for that, for that cooperation. Thank you so much for hosting us today. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Prime Minister. So now we have time for a few questions. Kindly wait for the microphone and introduce yourself and your media first, and we start with our Swedish guests and SVT. Thank you. Uh, Lisa Lindström from Sveriges Television. My question goes to, to er Ulf Kristersson. Um, you talked to the Turkish president Erdogan, uh, and after that you wrote on Twitter that your government will be able to get rid of this uh, memorandum that som då Finland, Sverige och Turkiet har kommit överens om. Vilka löften har ni gett Erdogan och Turkiet som Magdalena Anderssons regering inte var redo att ge? Och den 8 november kommer ni att träffa Erdogan. Uh, vad hoppas ni få ut av det mötet? Tack. Uh, 
was to be put, the question was obviously the deprecation for NATO and, and what this government could actually achieve. Is that the former government not well? Honestly, uh, I don't really think I expressed myself that way. Uh, I have, I do not think that this is an easy task. Uh, uh, I do not uh, try to say that this government, my government, will be able to do things rapidly in a different manner. Quite contrary, I stress the fact that we cooperate in Sweden. We did that under the previous government, and we stick to that cooperation under my government. So I, I have not really expressed myself in the way that you, you suggest I did. Um, we have enormous respect for the fact that it's uh, uh, Turkey that is actually uh, that we want to to um, to ratify our application. So simply to state the obvious, and we respect that every country has to make their own decision on this. But of course, uh, Sweden and Finland want uh, as as soon ratification as possible. That's obvious, and that was the reason why I had a, a telephone conversation just the other day with with President uh, Erdogan. Uh, and said, I'm, I'm very prepared to, to go to, to Ankara and, and, uh, and accept an invitation to Ankara. Um, as soon as this, uh, this uh, invitation is, uh, is uh, formally uh, agreed on and, and, and definite, uh, that I will come back to you with information about that trip. Okay, thank you. And then we continue with the Finnish media and TV3. Antonia Berri, MTV Uotiset. First, a question to Ulf Kristersson. Hur ser du på det här Turkiets inställning nu till ett svenskt NATO-medlemskap? Har det förändrats på något sätt i och med att ni har fått en ny regering i Sverige? Och om det inte har förändrats, så varför inte? Om det har förändrats, varför? Det sitter Sanna Marinil. Turki har inte tällä hetkellä nyt varit mitään erityistä Suomelta. Niin eikö enää nämä kuusi aikaisemmin mainittua henkilöä ole enää mikään asia Turki? Well, if, if I may start... Uh... I want to highlight that Finland and Sweden are preparing of joining NATO together. I think this is very important for the whole security environment of uh, the northern part of Europe. We, the both countries would strengthen uh, the whole alliance. Uh, we would make NATO stronger uh, together. And for us, it's very important that Finland and Sweden would join uh, NATO simultaneously as we have uh, making sure that, that we are also um, cooperated the whole process so closely. And I want also want to thank the previous Prime Minister Magdalena Andersson for such a good cooperation uh, with Sweden. Uh, and also I want to thank Ulf for a good cooperation so far when it comes to the NATO membership uh, and the ratification process. I have also discussed very briefly uh, with President Erdogan in, in Prague when we had uh, a meeting there uh, and he stated uh, and as i have told uh, before that there isn't that many questions when it comes to finland some questions when it comes to sweden uh, and i'm very happy that that all of you are making the trip to ankara and, and discussing uh, these matters i think it's very important that that we are uh, working together uh, and both countries are making sure that that uh, turkey can ratify our membership application as soon as possible. Prime Minister, if you don't mind, I will ask the, the, the answer the question in Swedish. Um, men i grund och botten, det finns den trilaterala överenskommelsen. Uh, det är mycket bra. Det är precis den som nu vägleder allt vårt arbete. Vi gör det också tillsammans med Finland systematiskt. Uh, jag kommer självklart uh, redovisa vilka steg som Sverige har tagit. Det gäller ju Många av de här sakerna som finns i avtalet, det handlar ju inte minst om Sveriges eh, väldigt starka engagemang för att bekämpa terrorism på olika sätt. Jag träffade Jens Stoltenberg i, i Bryssel eh, häromdagen och undersökte även där vår vilja att delta ännu närmare i NATOs kontraterrorismarbete. Eh, och att det här är ett långsiktigt engagemang. Att vi fullt ut förstår att det är många länder, inte minst eh, Turkiet nu, som är utsatta för, för den sortens... Eh, den sortens angrepp och att, och att det tar vi på mycket stort allvar. Så att det är inga nya ingredienser i detta, men det är helt legitimt för Turkiet att, 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 att få bekräftat att Sverige gör vad Sverige nu har åtagit sig inom ramen för det avtalet. Is it okay for you to say that 
the same also in English. Well, I know that there are on, online sorry, sorry, people from, sorry, the, basically, from London and all over the world watching no, this, no, sorry. this press conference. The rest of the world as well, yeah. yeah. Uh, basically just confirming that the trilateral agreement with, between Finland and, and, and Sweden and, and, and um, Turkey is, is, is valid and we are really committed to, to fulfill our obligations according to that agreement. And, uh, and that will, we do it firmly and we do it... Um, uh, we do it as uh, as rapidly as is possible, and that we s we recognize, of course, that uh, Turkey uh, has a, they are very keen on Swedish uh, um, leverage on that agreement, and that is perfectly le legitimate, and that will be discussed when when I when I uh, visit Ankara. Okay, thank you so much. Then we take the Swedish media again. It's uh, TV4. Magnus Wennerberg, TV4 Nyheterna Sverige. Uh, Ulf Kristersson in English. Do you see any risks for the uh, cooperation and unity between Sweden and Finland still? That the fact that uh, Turkey says that uh, they are ready to accept Finland but not Sweden, Sweden is the problem, that this could pose a risk for your unity uh, on time. And Sanna Marin, uh, I also wonder. Do you see any point where, if this status quo will last, uh, that you will consider to finish the process for Finland without Sweden, if it takes too long time? Should I start this time? Well, I do not see that risk, and that is simply because that we we are in this uh, in this journey together. We have been that from the very start. Uh, we have been taking every step so far hand in hand and, and none of us have any other ambition. I, uh, earlier today I also had a visit, uh, 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 a brief talk to, to the President of the Republic uh, and he has exactly the same, uh, the, the same view and the same, uh, confirms the same thing. And my experience so far is that all the other countries who has already ratified Swedish and the Finnish application uh, in a very rapid way, they have also the same same view. So we are in this together and I, I do not see any risks of that kind. We are very committed walking hand in hand with the NATO process with Sweden as we have uh, done so far. Uh, it's very important that we would both uh, become NATO member states simultaneously because it's not only uh, to do with Finland or Sweden but the whole Nordic uh, and the northern part of Europe, the whole security environment. So it's very important that we are entering NATO together. It's not only because we have such a good cooperation, but it's also uh, very important for the security perspective. So, of course, we hope that the situation uh, would go forward uh, as soon as possible, that Turkey and also Hungary would ratify our NATO membership applications as soon as possible, and we are very committed of working together in this process. Okay, thank you. And then the final one more question for the Finnish media, it's Vaya Lee. Tom Kankonen, Finnish Public TV. Um, I will ask in English, but we're really, really grateful if, if uh, Ulf could answer in, in Swedish. We love <laughs> Swedish in Finland. Um, President Erdogan has repeatedly called for uh, the extradition of tens of people more of them from Sweden than from, from Finland. And among those people, there are people who are, are Finnish and Swedish citizens, and there are individuals who have been given asylum in Sweden. Uh, this seems to be very difficult from the point of view of, of, of rule of law, and, and, and as a demand, rather unreasonable. Is there any way you, these issues, of course, are dealt by, by the Ministry of Justice, but could you, in a political way, make Erdogan understand uh, how rule of law works, and, and that some of these uh, these demands are, are simply unreasonable. And then, uh, to Sanna Marin, if I could ask, uh, do you have, are there any plans that either you or, or President Niinistö would go to Ankara? Although I think it's Erdogan's turn to come to Finland in, 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 to visit the Niinistö. Thank you very much, I'll answer. It's not just you or you who love Swedish. We also love Finnish. I'm not born in Torshälle, but in Eskilstuna. So I had my childhood, I had to learn to Finnish. Jo, nej men alltså svaret är, det är, formalis, det är formellt men det är viktigt. Vi fullföljer avtalet. Det är viktigt. I avtalet står det vad Sverige, Finland och Turkiet har kommit överens om. 
Vi är vi helhjärtat engagerade i att uppfylla det avtalet. Där står det också, där står det också självklara saker som att vi gör det under, under svensk lag. Vi gör det också med, med under, under givna konventioner. Allt, allt detta. Så jag tycker inte man ska, man ska inte lägga in några andra tolkningar i detta. Utan vi fullföljer avtalet och vi gör det på ett korrekt och transparent sätt. Och vi är övertygade om att vi kommer kunna göra det på ett sådant sätt som leder Turkiet till till slutsatsen att, att de kan ratificera det svenska beslutet. Men jag vill verkligen understryka detta, att kampen mot terrorism den är legitim. Vi har fått erfara den i Sverige. Många andra länder, Turkiet får erfara den också. Och vi har stor respekt för deras vilja att bekämpa internationell terrorism var någonstans den än har sitt fotum. Det har vi understrykt gång på gång. Och att vi gör det självklart under de, och enligt de lagar som som finns i Sverige. Och det andra vi har stor respekt för det är alltså att det är Turkiet som eh, fattar sitt beslut. Det är alltså Sverige och Finland som söker medlemskap i NATO. Och då har vi respekt för att varje NATO den fattar det beslutet. Så att man har klart för sig vem som söker medlemskap var någonstans. There isn't a scheduled plan for me to visit uh, Turkey or, or President Erdogan and I'm sure the President Ninista and the President Office will tell you personally if they have but but I don't comment on that. So I think we have time for one more question. Okay, Oliver is Ilta Sanomat. Uh, I come back to this Turkey question again. Um, uh, President Erdogan uh, has underlined that the promises made to Turkey have to be kept. Uh, is it clear uh, what Erdogan means when he talks about promises. And can you say again that has Sweden made any concessions during the negotiations with Turkey? And uh, to add, uh, the timetable of this process is, of, of course, very difficult question. But anyway, uh, can you tell any estimates uh, how, how long uh, Finland and Sweden might have to wait? Are we talking about months or even a year or something? On the timetable issue, I think it's quite obvious. I will not guess uh, or speculate on that. Quite contrarily say that with full respect that uh, Turkey, Turkey is making their decisions uh, and their decision making is of very big importance to Sweden and Finland and we res simply respect the way things work. So, but we have to do our part of it and we are doing our part and there are no other concessions uh, being made except for the very obvious uh, obligations we have according to the trilateral uh, agreement, and that is fair enough. Uh, so we are working very hard to fulfill uh, what Sweden is supposed to do, and of course we will report very in, in detail what we have achieved, what we have done uh, since the, that trilateral agreement was made in, in, in Madrid uh, early earlier this year. So nothing nothing more than that, but nothing least less than that either. Okay. It's time to close this press conference, so I wish you everyone a very, very happy weekend. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much.